Hello, hello, Sarah of SEK Handmade here, and today I'm going to share with you how to cake your yarn. <laughs> um, I love putting my yarn in a cake, but it does take some knowledge and some tools to get it done. You may have seen yarn sold like this. A lot of times hand dyed yarn or fancier yarn will come in a skein like this. And you have to change this either into a cake or into a hand wound ball before you're able to uh, knit or crochet with it. A cake looks like this. To get a cake of yarn, you need to use a yarn ball winder. And today I'm gonna to show you using a yarn ball winder in conjunction with using a Swift. If you do not have a Swift, that's okay. You can make a cake without a Swift. It just it, uh, is a little more tedious and takes a little more time. All right, so first I want to show you my yarn ball winder. Um. These come in lots of price ranges from fairly inexpensive to very expensive, from manual to uh, motor driven. So I'll put some links in the description below if you want to um, see some options for purchasing a yarn ball winder if you don't have one. Um, but they are a vandy, very handy tool. And if you want to make a cake, you need a yarn ball winder. Along with a yarn ball winder, I recommend using a Swift. Um, Swifts can be a little more expensive though. I think you can find them now at a pretty reasonable price. They also come in a variety of styles. Woo! I have what's called an umbrella Swift and that's because it opens like an umbrella. But um, you can find tabletop Swifts too, which are just stationary and spin on top of your table. This one attaches to the side of my table. Again, I'll put some links in the description below if you want to check out some of the different types of Swifts that you can purchase. As I said before, you do need a yarn ball winder to make your yarn into a cake, but you do not need a yarn ball winder or a Swift to change the hank into workable yarn. You can hand wind the yarn into a ball. And I already have a video showing you how to hand wind a center pull ball of yarn, and I'll link that in the description below too. But in today's video, I am going to go ahead and show you how to wind your cake using a yarn ball winder and a Swift. So here we go. All right, so to cake up my yarn, I am going to use my yarn ball winder, my Swift, and just a little pair of scissors. Those are all the tools you need to turn your hank into a cake. My yarn ball winder, and I think most yarn ball winders, clamp onto the table. So the first thing I'm going to do in, is I'm going to clamp it to the end of my table. You can clamp it to a countertop, uh, a dresser, whatever you'll find that the clamp will fit around. The reason I'm choosing to clamp my yarn ball winder to this end of the table is that I feed the yarn through here, so this needs to be facing my Swift. My Swift also has a clamp, and so it clamps onto my table. You will find um, some tabletop Swifts that just sit on the tabletop. So if you have one of those, you can assemble it according to its directions and sit it at the table. I do find that a little space between the yarn ball winder and the Swift is helpful in winding the yarn. My Swift is an umbrella Swift, and so it opens like an umbrella. And I'm gonna open it just part of the way and tighten it to hold it open. And now that I have my Swift 
open and ready to go and my yarn ball winder attached to the table, I am ready to work with my yarn. You will find that one end of the yarn is this nice rounded end and then the other end has a part that's been tucked through and a loop. To undo your hank, you simply just have to pull the uh, end out and it will unwind. And now you just have a big loop of yarn. Just make sure that when you've got your big loop of yarn that you don't have any pieces that are pulling across the center that will tangle up your yarn when you put it on your Swift. To get it on your Swift, I just like to start at the far side and pull it over carefully each piece of my Swift. And now you can see it's not tight here and that's helpful in getting it to wrap around your Swift. But if I were to let go of this, it would just fall. <laughs> so to make sure it stays put on my Swift, I'm going to open the umbrella part higher and wider so that it holds my yarn in place. Now, you don't want this to be super tight. You want to find a balance between so loose that your yarn is going to fall off and so tight that you're stretching the yarn because we definitely don't want to do that. Okay, the next thing you're going to do to get your yarn ready to wind up into a cake is you're going to take the label off. So I'm just going to pull that apart. And now this one was, uh, had a staple in it. I don't want that to get caught on my yarn. So I'm going to discard the staple, but I'm not going to discard the wrapper because I want to keep that with my yarn <laughs> so that I don't forget what I have. After that, you'll see as you spin your Swift around, there are these little extra threads that are wound through the hank of yarn. These are what keep it from getting tangled um, while it's in the hank. So all you need to do is carefully snip those little pieces of yarn and pull them out. They're not attached to the hank of yarn. So when you snip them apart, it's, it's not a big deal. So then you just need to keep spinning and finding all of those ends. There can be several. Now you can see that this one is actually attached. And so this is the beginning and the end of my hank. So I'm just going to snip that little knot there. And now I've got the beginning and the end of my skein. And I'm just going to keep spinning to make sure that I don't have more of those. All right, I'm back to where my uh, beginning and ending of my yarn are. And you can kind of see that this one tucks under. So I'm just going to kind of tuck it back under the rest of the skein and I'm going to start by pulling from this end and so this is what I'm going to feed into my yarn ball winder. Now that I've decided which end I'm going to feed into my yarn ball winder I'm going to bring it over here. It wraps around the little coil there and that helps feed it into the right place of the yarn ball winder and then you'll see on your yarn ball winder you have two little divots you're going to place your the end of your yarn into those divots. That's going to hold your yarn in place as you wind it. And then you're just ready to turn your yarn ball winder and your Swift will turn unraveling your yarn from the hank and on to your yarn ball winder to make a cake. I do recommend that you're a little careful 
Speed is not the goal here. Getting a nice even tension on your yarn is. And um, so I wouldn't go too crazy. Um, this is also why I don't let my kids, though they really want to, help with winding really nice yarn because I don't want it to get stretched out and sometimes they go really crazy. So just a nice, it even shows you turn the handle in this direction, a nice even tension as you spin. And it'll wrap around and around and around. All right, I want to point out a couple things. You saw me stop there. The only reason I did that was because my final end came unwound a little bit and started wrapping around the center of my Swift. If I hadn't paused, it would have just continued to get tighter and tighter. Um, so I stopped, I unwound it, and I hung it over the at bottom of the uh, umbrella swift so that it wouldn't continue to get tangled. If you need to stop while you're winding, I recommend you slow down at first and then you're going to want to look at your cake because it will change the tension on the yarn and can make it kind of loosey-goosey which will make your cake uh, potentially fall apart. If you can do it all in one go without stopping, that is what I most recommend. And then you can see I didn't grab my end quite quickly enough and it got a little tangled around my winder here. So I'm just going to unwind a couple rounds and I'm just going to put tension on it um, myself with my fingers. So I'm going to hold it gently here and wrap around and then leave a little tail and once I take it off, I'll just wrap that around the outside. Your cake from your yarn ball winder is super simple. All you really have to do is grab the cake and lift it gently off of the yarn ball winder. I will tell you a little trick that I learned to keep my yarn wrapper with my ball of yarn. I simply take the wrapper and roll it up. Put it right there in the center of my yarn ball winder. <laughs> and then as I pull my cake off of my yarn ball winder, the wrapper will be inside my cake and stay with my cake then. So just gently lift it off. I'm going to let go of my wrapper, lift it all the way off, and then I'm just going to turn it sideways and wrap my excess yarn around the outside. Now you may be saying, Sarah, if I put the wrapper in the middle, how am I going to center pull my cake? I actually don't recommend that you center pull with your cake. I recommend you pull from the outside. It keeps a more even tension on your yarn as you work and you won't pull out a whole bunch of what we call yarn barf <laughs> from the center of your cake. And that is how you cake your yarn using a yarn ball winder and a Swift. Now, I do want to let you know, some people enjoy caking up all of their yarn directly when they purchase it um, and like to store it in different ways in those cakes. Personally, I recommend waiting to cake your yarn until you're ready or almost ready to use it. Um, you need to be careful as you cake your yarn that you don't stretch the fibers, which can happen sometimes. So 
leaving them in the cake for a longer amount of time can change the weight of the fiber due to stretching. So I do recommend that you wait to cake your yarn until you're almost ready to use it. I hope you've enjoyed my video of how to cake your yarn. Links and all the good things are in the description below. I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It lets me know what you'd like to see more of and happy crafting.